<coughs> Hello, hi guys. Uh, today we'll be solving a question using the intercept method uh, for the star as a celestial body. All right. So my previous video had uh, discussed this same uh, method using sun as a celestial body, but uh, this video is about using the star as a celestial body and what can we do with the intercept. All right. So the I'll go straight away into the question. The question is uh, that is 23rd of August 1992 and there is a dead reckoning position given to you uh, that is an estimated position given to you at, and it is 1800 hours on the ship that's the ship's mean time or the zone time uh, the sextant altitude of the star Spica was 45 degrees 27.2 when the chronometer error was 2 minutes 19 seconds slow and the chronometer time showed 6 hours 15 minutes 0 second height of i was 11 meters and the index error was 2.1 minutes on the arc and uh, <coughs> sorry and we have to calculate the direction of the position line also called pl and a position through which it passes all right so we'll get straight into it uh, so the first thing you should do is solve the ambiguity of the chronometer time the chronometer time given to you is 6 hours 15 minutes and 0 seconds and that could also mean that it is 6 hours in the morning or 6 in the evening which will be 18 hours 15 minutes or 0 seconds all right and uh, so we take both the cases and we'll have to figure out which is the correct chronometer time which will give us the gmt for further use all right so then we apply the error <coughs> which is 2 minutes 19 seconds slow so if the error is slow you always add the error because that means chronometer is running behind if the error is fast you will subtract it hmm? once you add the error uh, you get the gmt time in one case it's 6 17 19 and the other is 18 17 and 19 and then you apply your zone your zone depends on your lit or your longitude in time so you get your zone you get your zone by dividing your longitude by 15 and then rounding it off to the next hour so in this case the longitude is uh, just three zero zero three degrees and 30 minutes all right so if you divide it by 15 um, it's uh, not even an hour and that's why it's and you know the it's so close to the greenwich meridian that uh, you keep the same time as the greenwich all right and that's why your zone is zero so here in this case you will get zero hours and 14 minutes and that means it's so close to the greenwich meridian that your zone is zero you're basically keeping the same time as the greenwich and that's why your zone is uh, this is also called lit all right in lit you keep the hours and minutes but in zone you make it a round number all right so you are in zone zero that means you are, you are so close to the gmt time that you will be keeping a very close time you will be keeping the same time as the gmt and that's why in both the cases your zone is zero so you end up with the same zone time or the ship's mean time or smt as that of the gmt all right so how do i know which is correct because the hint given to me in the question is that it is about 1800 hours on the ship so if it's 1800 hours on the ship it has to be the second case this case here all right and that's why i put the date 23rd august here if it's 18 it's it's 23rd august here so gmt must be 23rd as well so i can cancel out the first case because this is not what i need right so my correct gmt becomes 23rd of august 1817 19. all right taking this gmt time this is my gmt to be used for the rest of the question I will go into finding the GHA Aries now when it's a um, star as a celestial body I will find out my GHA Aries uh, for 1800 hours then I'll find out my increment for uh, 17 minutes and 19 seconds I will add the increment and I'll show you in a short while where do I get these values from so you have to go into the 1992 nautical almanac and you can find out these values from there and then of course i will add the increment and get my gha corrected for 18 hours 17 minutes and 19 seconds all right so let me go into the almanac the other two things i'll be finding out is my shs star shs speaker shs star of speaker and the declination of uh, the star as well speaker this is we can find this out from the same page all right so we'll go into the nautical almanac for 1992 uh, for 23rd of august so let's go there so you can see uh, I've kept this ready here. So it's uh, 1992 nautical almanac for 23rd of August. And if I can uh, show it to you here, uh, this is the column that you'll be going into the Aries column. 
and I need to go into 23rd of August and for 1800 hours this is your GH Aries 243 15.8 and the star is Spica so you can get your SHA and declination from here this is Spica here in this case there is no correction for stars you don't have to apply any correction alright so you can straight away get the declination for the star speaker and you can also note down the SHA value of the star from here so these are some of the things that you can get straight off from the same page alright uh, so I'll go back to my calculations now and you will see that I've used the same values there now one more thing I have to show you is the increment of course the increment uh, for 17 minutes and 19 seconds so for that we go back into the nautical almanac and uh, 17 minutes and 19 seconds of increment will be we go into the increments page here 17 minutes and 19 seconds so for the star you go here under Aries for 17 minutes and 19 seconds this is the increment you will be using 4 degrees 20.5 minutes all right so we go back again you can see that's the increment I've used 4 degrees 20.5 increment is always added you get the increment you get the GH Aries corrected and then you write down your longitude if your longitude is west your GHA will be best that means GHA will be more than LHA so you will subtract the longitude if it's west longitude if it was east then GHA would be least LHA will be more you will add the longitude but if longitude is west GHA is the best and you will subtract the longitude and you get your LHA Aries once you get your LHA Aries just add your SHA star that you got from the first page previous page that I showed you SHA is always added regardless but if on adding you see that LHA is gone more than 360 you will subtract it from 360 LHA value has to be less than 360 it cannot be more than 360 all right and then this is your corrected LHA if LHA is between 0 to 180 the LHA is called west this is the west LHA if it is more than 180 to 360 LHA would have been called east then we start solving the sextant altitude the sextant altitude is given to us as 45 degrees 27.2 you apply your index error 2.1 on the arc when it's on the arc you will subtract it if it was off the arc you would add it so in this case it's on the arc you will subtract it and what you get is the observed altitude of 45 degrees 25.1 using this observed altitude then you apply the dip correction or the height of eye correction now dip is for 11 meters so you have to go back into the almanac on the normally on the very first page of the almanac you have the height of eye correction so you can get the height of eye correction of 11 meters from there and I'll show you where uh, what else you can get from that page because we'll be on that page. You can also get the once you apply the height of eye correction, which is always negative, you subtract it. You get apparent altitude of 45 degrees 19.3. You can also get the total correction value. You can get the total correction value for the star as well. So I'll show you both the things together. So we remember that it's dip of 11 meters and apparent altitude of 45 degrees 19.3. So if I go back into the almanac and if I shut this page off and if I go so it's normally on the very first page this is the page right so you can see that for deep of 11 meters this is the this is the table that you will be using 11 meters comes somewhere here right this section here 5.8 and uh, total correction of stars is you get it from here for apparent audio 45 degrees 19.3 so you'll get it somewhere here middle of this you don't have to do any interpolation this is the total correction minus one all right so you can use the values from here and once you go back here you can see the dip is minus 5.8 and the total correction is minus one all right so you know where to get these values from and uh, then you will subtract it and you get a true altitude of 45 degrees 18.3 if you subtract it from 90 degrees you get a true zenith distance this is tzx or TZD some books write TZD don't worry about the CZX and intercept at this stage so till this stage you only have your TZX all right we'll stop at TZX or two zenith distance next after two zenith distance you'll go here you'll start calculating the calculated zenith distance or CZX and you how do you do that you just use the formula here cos LHA times cos of lat cos of declination plus or minus sine lat or sine declination now why is there a plus or minus because it will depend on the signs of the latitude and declination if latitude and declination are same names such as both of them are south or both of them are north you will use the plus sign if one of them is different from the other such as one is south and other north you will use the subtract sign now in this case you can see both latitude and declination are south 
so you will use the plus sign correct then you simply use the formula put in the values of the LHA lat and declination use the plus sign because lat and declination are same names then sign of the lat and declination put in the values follow my prompts here see what values I've got you should be getting the same values if you solve it and finally a cos inverse of the final value will give you the CZX of 44 degrees 41.3 minutes using this CZX of 44, 44 degrees and 41.3 put it here back go back to where you wrote your TZX put your CZX here as well so you write them both together and then come make a comparison so you can subtract over the bigger number from the smaller number or rather, rather the smaller number from the bigger number and the rule is uh, if true true then the distance is less so what we say this rule is called TTT if true is tiny it's two words so if true is tiny it's two words if two is more than CZX then it is away so in this case you can see that true zenith distance is more than calculated zenith distance so if TZX is more than CZX you will name it away if true was less than CZX you would name it two words so in this case your intercept is 0.4 away why is it 0.4 I just subtracted the smaller number from the bigger number so tzx minus czx will give me my intercept once i got my intercept i have to calculate my bearing in position line so for that i'll calculate my components of a b and c you can use the norris tables as well to do so but these days we have calculators scientific calculators and it's much faster so a is tan lat divided by tan p simply put in the value of so when we say p that also means lha Alright, so just put in the value of the latitude and LHA, you will get 0.77. If you ever get a negative sign, just ignore the negative sign. Then you name it north. You name it north because it's named opposite to latitude unless LHA is between 90 and 270. Your LHA is not between 90 and 270, it's 41 degrees 54.9. So you will name it opposite to latitude. So your latitude was south, that's why you named it north. Then you have B. B is calculated from tan declination divided by sine P or sine of LHA. Simply put in the values here, you should be getting 0 0.29. This is named same as declination. Named always same as declination. Alright, if you ever get a negative sign, just ignore the negative sign. So, if you ever get negative signs with A or B, ignore them. Alright, we use the components of north and south to find out whether they have to be subtracted or added. Then you write down A and B here. The rule is if A and B are different names, you will subtract it. So if one is north, the other one is south, or one is south, the other one is north, you will subtract it. If they were same names, you would add it. Now in this case, they are different names. So you subtracted it and you get your C and you retain the name of the larger. So in this, from A and B, A was larger, so you retain the same name. So north comes here as well. Finally, you find out your azimuth. So the formula is tan of azimuth equals 1 divided by C times cos of latitude. Put in the value of C, which is 0 0.48, and latitude, you know that already. It's a dr latitude. Solve the denominator first. Get the answer. Follow my prompts. Get a tan inverse, and then you get your azimuth. So your azimuth here that you will get is 68.4 degrees. Depending on the number of decimal places, some of you might get a slightly different answer, but nothing more than 68 or 68.5, 68.8, or something like that. I have rounded it off to 68 degrees because we are working with bearings. And sometimes you need to plot these on the plotting sheet so i've rounded it off even if you continue with the same bearing that's fine but if you have to plot it then it's better to work with whole numbers and that's why i've made 68.4 into 68 degrees if it was more than 0.5 i would have named it 69 then i have named it north 68 west how do i get my north and west from north i get from my c whatever my c is name of c i'll put that here whatever my c is i will name it here this i get from my lha so initially we had named our LHA West as you remember if LHA is between 0 to 180 you can see over here LHA is West so I will name this same as LHA so if LHA is between 0 to 180 it's named West if it's more than 180 to 360 it's named East all right so in this case it's Northwest 68 that also means this is equal to 292 degrees so if you ask me how then this is how you have to understand it this is North this is 000 or 360 and this is west 270 and this is 000 or you can also call it 360 so if you are going north 68 west 
that means about here 68 degrees you are going 68 degrees from north towards west and then this becomes 292 that's why this is 292 degrees true is your bearing or your azimuth true bearing all right to get your position line just subtract and add 90 to it so if you add 90 you will see you get 382 it cannot be more than 360 so you will subtract from 360 you get 022 degrees and if you subtract 90 from this you get 202 degrees so your position line becomes 022 to 202 degrees this is your position line so that basically means that at any position when you're drawing you will draw it at a bearing of 292 which will go somewhere here this is could be your dr lat and long although one of them should be observed lat but doesn't matter in this question it's dr lat and long and you draw it towards a bearing of 292 for an intercept of 0.4 in this case it was 0.4 away am i right it was 0.4 away so you will not draw it towards 292 you will draw it away from 292 so you go opposite to 292 diametrically opposite to 292 you will go in a direction of 292 minus 180 which is 112 you will go in a direction of 112 degrees true 0.4 when he says 0.4 minutes is 0.4 miles basically and then when over here you draw a perpendicular line this gives you a position line this orientation of the position line is 0 to 2 to 2 0 2 degrees so that's the concept behind it all right so if you have any questions please uh, write uh, in the comments and i'll happy to answer them and uh, i'll see you soon thanks for watching